What's up guys? We're back with another educational video and this week we are talking about vegan diets and nitrogen balance. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm FTA. So a new study came out where they were looking at nitrogen balance and vegan diets. Now, you guys need to understand nitrogen balance first. It's very, very, very simple. So in nitrogen balance studies, what they're looking at is how much nitrogen are you taking in versus how much is coming out. Now, why is nitrogen important? Well, protein and amino acids are unique compared to other macronutrients because they are the only nitrogen containing compound that we consume. When you're looking at nitrogen balance, what you're really looking at is how much of that amino acid or protein that you took in got retained in the body. So if you want to build muscle or like just basically have enough protein to run your bodily functions, you wanna be at least in nitrogen balance, preferably in a positive nitrogen balance. The RDA for protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram, basically the amount of protein that's required for most people to maintain nitrogen balance. But it's never really been examined super stringently in vegan diets. When it comes to nitrogen balance, what you're looking at is measuring how much nitrogen is going in versus how much is coming out. Now, where does it come out? It comes out in urine, feces, sweat, and some other random things they are very small. Some nitrogen balance studies collect everything. So they have people in chambers and they collect their sweat, they collect everything. But usually what's done is they collect people's urine, which is where the majority of nitrogen comes out as urea. And then they use a constant for fecal losses and sweat losses. So in this study, that's what they were doing. They were looking at young, recreationally active vegan males. The average length of time these people had been on a vegan diet was about seven years. And they were looking, would the RDA for protein keep them in nitrogen balance or a positive nitrogen balance? Now what was cool about this study is they provided all the foods to the participants. So they controlled every single thing they ate and they did that for five days. And on the last day, they did a urine collection. I know, here come all the expert scientists on Instagram and YouTube to say, well, five days won't show you anything. Actually for nitrogen balance, five days is plenty. Because basically you just need enough time for the person to get adapted to the diet so that they are in a steady state in terms of their nitrogen intake and excretion. What they're looking at is basically 16% of the weight of protein is nitrogen. So what they do is based on how much protein you take in, they just divide by 6.25 and that gives them the nitrogen content. Then they collected their urine, looked at how much nitrogen was in the urine and voila, you use the constant, you can basically figure out what their nitrogen balance is. The other thing that's important to point out with this study is they made sure that these people had a good amino acid breakdown based on the DIAA scores. So basically they made sure that they were hitting their amino acid requirements by using varied protein sources. Interestingly, what they found was that these folks were in a negative nitrogen balance. So it was about a 1.3 gram per day negative nitrogen balance, which actually equates to about an average of eight grams per day negative body protein balance. And all, over the course of a year, that would equate to about three kilograms of tissue. So it'd be loss of about three kilograms of lean tissue. Does this mean vegan diets are trash and you should never do them? No. What it means is what we've known and what I've said for a long time, which is if you are going to use a vegan diet, it will require more protein than a diet that is omnivorous. So omnivorous diets with animal proteins, animal proteins tend to be higher quality because they have more essential amino acids, more branch chain amino acids, and more leucine, which leucine is the amino acid responsible for stimulating muscle protein synthesis. They also tend to be more bioavailable because if you're using intact plant protein sources, the protein tends to be bound up in the fibrous material of the plant which makes it less accessible to digestive enzymes. Keep in mind, these people were only getting in 60 grams of protein per day, which is basically the RDA for their body weight. If you're gonna be vegan, what it says is you probably should increase your protein by like 10 to 20%, okay? And you will probably want to supplement with some kind of isolated protein powder, simply because, especially if you wanna build muscle, it is going to be difficult 
to get enough total protein in for an optimal amount of protein, which is more like two to 2.5 grams per kilogram, using vegan sources without also getting a lot of calories along with them because they tend to have carbs and fats with them and because they're less digestible. It doesn't mean you can't build muscle on a vegan diet, you absolutely can. It just is gonna require a bit more planning and a bit more attention to detail. A vegan diet can absolutely work. You just gotta pay a little bit more attention. A lot of people think I'm like anti-vegan or anti-intermittent fasting or anti-carnivore or anti-low carb. And the reality is I'm none of those things. I'm just anti-BS, which is why if you look at our nutrition coaching app, Carbon Diet Coach, we don't pigeonhole you into one diet. There's all kinds of dietary preferences you can have like low carb, low fat, plant-based, ketogenic, balanced. We allow any dietary preference because at the end of the day, the most important thing is making sure you're eating enough calories to support your goal, whatever that may be, whether it's fat loss, muscle gain, maintenance, and you're consuming enough protein to support your goal. Carbon Diet Coach does all those things, but doesn't try to pigeonhole you into any one way of eating. We let you pick the dietary preference that's right for you. So click the link in the description if you're interested in that, and I'll catch you guys next week.